Hey, Tim Frisch with a fresh perspective here. We've been awaiting the results of the hearing yesterday, the court hearing concerning Pastor John MacArthur, Grace Community Church's situation. It was a contempt hearing, and uh, this was supposed to get the ball rolling on answering the question of their case and, and how that's going to be dealt with in the courts. And uh, I did see some results here that have been given. Uh, This article says, Judge sets date parameters in Grace Community Church contempt hearing. So no finalized results or anything have been given at this point. It looks like they're just getting the ball rolling here. But the judge has set parameters. So we'll look at this article in more detail. Before I look at that article, if you enjoy Christian nerdy content like this, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification so you know when I upload a new video. So the article here says, A judge said Friday he will allow pretrial discovery and the calling of witnesses in a contempt hearing against Grace Community Church and its pastor for holding indoor services in alleged violation of a September court order issued over coronavirus concerns. Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Mitchell L. Beckloff also set a January 15th date for the contempt hearing, which will deal with whether fines should be levied on the Sun Valley Church on Roscoe Boulevard and Pastor MacArthur for continuing to allow Sunday worship in the church's interior despite the judge's issuance of a preliminary injunction on September 10th. Friday's hearing dealt with the scope of the contempt hearing. So the hearing yesterday, November 13th, it says dealt with the scope of this trial. And actually the full contempt hearing, it looks like, is going to take place January 15th. So this will continue on in January. That's kind of good news for the church because it means that for the next couple of months, it sounds like they'll be able to continue to meet as they have been because really the courts are just putting this off. Church lawyers have stated in their court papers that they are seeking the depositions of Supervisor Sheila Quell and Los Angeles County Health Officer Dr. Muntu Davis. They note that during a September 24th hearing, Beckloff said he agreed with the church's attorneys that they should be able to raise constitutional issues and have a longer trial than lawyers for the county believe is needed. In their court papers, county lawyers say the depositions are not necessary and that the only question is whether the preliminary injunction is void. Church attorney Charles S. LaMandry told the judge he will try to narrow the scope of the pretrial discovery so that the parties do not have to come to court to have Beckloff resolve their differences. LaMandry also said that depending on the size of the fines the county seeks against the defendants, his clients may be entitled to a jury trial. LaMandry said the pretrial discovery is necessary because church officials believe the county has displayed more animus toward churches with its coronavirus health orders than any entity other than gyms. He said tattoo parlors and nail salons have received greater consideration than have churches. LaMandry also noted that San Diego County Superior Court Judge Joel L. Wolfell on November 6, issued a temporary restraining order enjoining Governor Gavin Newsom and San Diego County from enforcing their COVID-19 restrictions at a strip club, finding that the dancers' activities were constitutionally protected expression. You can't pray to Almighty God, but you can watch nude dancing, LaMandry said. In their court papers, church lawyers say they want to ask Davis to explain why he has not sought a temporary restraining order against any political protesters and why he sought an injunction against the church rather than solely issuing citations. LaMandry told the judge he would like to question Quell about the county's decision to revoke the church's use of a county-owned parking lot the House of Worship began using in 1975. Beckloff agreed with county lawyers that the contempt hearing should be held before a trial on the merits of a permanent injunction. LaMandry argued the contempt hearing should take place afterward. The church has filed a separate lawsuit against the county that was recently transferred from Burbank Superior Court to Glendale Superior Court. Judge Ralph C. Hofer will hear the trial regarding a possible permanent injunction, but no date is yet set. So this court hearing from yesterday hasn't given us a ton of information, but from what I can gather, the church attorneys want to have the ability to question county health officials about how they're dealing with the church compared to other entities like protesters. LaMandry also brought up the issue of how uh, Gavin Newsom 
had tried to prevent strip clubs from meeting, but the courts had decided that strip clubs are legally protected. So one of the big issues that I think is going to come out in this case is something I've talked about, the issue of consistency. That's certainly something that could be in the church's favor as they're pointing out inconsistencies in how the county is handling uh, different situations. If the county is coming down hard on some groups but not on others, that is going to be a consistency issue. And also legal consistency. If the courts are saying that these activities like strip clubs are legally protected, then wouldn't that apply to churches? Now, I'm sure there's a lot more to these situations that have to be sorted out, but that issue of consistency is a really important one. And another issue is safety. And I think, again, this, this is actually really in the church's favor what's happening here because the fact that this is going to continue on till at least January 15th just to decide if the church is in contempt of court means that this is dragging out for quite a while. And that's good for the church because it really allows them to prove their case that what they're doing is not unsafe. So recently it was said that they had an outbreak, but then also just recently the, the public health department said that the church has been cleared of an outbreak of COVID-19. And so as time goes on, the church continues to meet, they can make their case that they're not doing anything that is endangering the safety of individuals attending church or the greater public. Now, of course, that rides on them actually making sure that people are being safe and that there is no major outbreak of COVID. So we'll see what happens with that. But to this point, there's a lot really favoring the church's case here. Of course, we never know how a judge will look at the situation but that issue of consistency is a big issue and also the issue of safety is another one. So that's how things have gone so far. The parameters of the case have been set and January 15th looks like the next date for a court hearing on this case. While it would be nice to have clear answers at this point, at least it's good to know that the church is going to be able to continue their activities without any legal consequences from what we can tell at this point. So that's the latest update. I'm sure you're all going to keep this in prayer. I'd love to hear what you think about all of this in the comments below. Just make sure you keep those comments positive and helpful to discussion. But thank you so much for listening to this report and some of my thoughts brought to you from a fresh perspective.